Today, I want to come your way and give you a little word of encouragement. Since the creation of the world, many years have come and gone. We've seen so many days, so many weeks and months. Through these years that we have enjoyed, we have made plans. Some of the plans came to pass. Others have not yet come to pass. Some failed. But then, as we move through this life and face these challenges that we go through, there is one thing I want us to understand that when these challenges become very much unbearable, some may want to throw in a towel or we may want to quit. Either following Christ or following, I mean, living their life. When things become so difficult and confusing, people begin to end life. But today I come your way to let you understand that that does not stop the problem. I humbly want to ask that you don't have to throw in the towel. Neither do you have to quit. But hold on. Amen. But hold on. We are serving a God who loves his people. One time Jesus was speaking with his disciples. And he came up and said to them that, just look at the flowers and look at the, the birds of the air. They need a soul. They don't do anything yet. God do care for them. And in this life, we have so many plans. But he encouraged us to do one thing. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, Jesus said that there is one thing that is most important in the life of a person that we should see Christ first. And the other things will be added. One way or the other, we have turned the things around and we are seeking the other things and we've left the God whom we need to serve. Or the kingdom of God that we must look for. He said, seek him first and the other things will be added. And he went on to say in verse 34, and I read Matthew chapter 6 verse 34, if you are writing I'm speaking on the subject, hold on. Hold on. Matthew chapter 6 verse 34 says, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about tomorrow. That doesn't mean don't think about it, but don't worry about it. Don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Meaning that the day has its own trouble. So why do you have to add more to it? I always tell people that the things that you can change, go ahead and change them. But the things that you cannot change, allow God to do it. It is the things that we can't change, that we want to change, that makes us or put it at the corner where we feel that everything is gone. Sometimes we worry too much about clothing that we may not even need. We worry much about things that may not be a need but a want. We don't have to do that. The day has its trouble. Every day that we wake up, we are faced with challenges. And it will go on till Christ come. We've gone through a lot and we are still moving through it. Corona and his brother virus has come to do a lot. But that doesn't change the fact that there is a God who lives and cares for his people. Hallelujah. I have read a lot about the people that were taken or have been taken by this disease. And almost every one of them that I read about or I heard about were people that were so much that cares about people or do things that are needed by people. 
they were always at a point where they are much needed, especially those that were in churches that I know. When I asked the pastors, they said, wow, this is the person that does everything. This is the person that does that. This is the woman that did this. this is the, it is, and I asked myself, why will God choose those people? If God had not given out the way, those things wouldn't have happened. The fact that we are living does not mean that we were that smart. No. You had it. I had it. Most of us had it. Almost everyone. There are people that may have had it and they did not even know. Including me. But God's grace kept us. So if something did not happen to us or it happened to some people, it wasn't because of anything they did wrong. But God decided to make it so. And so I want to encourage you, church, that no matter the problems that we are facing and the troubles that you are going through, the things that you can change, do change them. If you have the means to change it, do so. If you don't have the means, don't struggle too much. Allow the day to take its course. In Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 6, Moses said to them, Be strong and of good courage. Be strong and of good courage. If you can go forward and, and achieve the promises that God has given to you or has given to me or us, what we must do first is to be strong and of, of being good courage. We don't have to fear. He says, be strong and of good courage. Do not fear, nor be afraid of them. Them meaning that the, the people that you are going to face, the challenges that you are going to go through, the things that you will face that will be very difficult to handle. He says that don't fear them. Be strong and of good courage. Today I give you the same word that the Lord your God, the one that has made you and has carried you through all these years, the many years that you have gone through, has gone with you through the other challenges that you were in when you were in the valley. The Lord your God, he will not leave you, nor forsake you. The Bible says, he said, God said, I know the thoughts that I have for you. So if we don't understand what God is doing, he has a plan. He says, I know the thoughts that I have for you, the plans that I have for you. I, I have drawn something for your life. The Lord, your God, he will not leave you, nor forsake you. The fact that you have not had it now does not mean that you won't get it. You may not have it now, but I know and I believe that God will bring it to pass. Psalm 125 verse 1 and 2 says, Those who trust in the Lord. Those who trust in the Lord. Those who have firm belief in the God whom they serve. Those who have, are, are so confident in the God whom they serve. Those who trust. Listen, it's not everybody, but those. And I pray that today you will be part of the those. I don't know where you stand, but be part of the those. Those who trust in the Lord. They are like Mount Zion which cannot be moved, but abide forever. When you trust in the Lord, you will abide. When the storms become so hard, because your, your plans and your, your way of life is not based upon what you have, nor the, the, the things around you, but it is based upon the God whom you serve, the Lord your God that you, tr you believe. Those that trust in the Lord, they are like Mount Zion which cannot be moved but abide forever. Verse 2 says, As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surround His people from time forth and forever. So the Lord surround His people from this time forth and forever. Church, we have a God. We have a God. And this is the God who created the heavens and the earth. He lives in power. He has power. He acts in power. It is all about him. Every way, every how, and the form of God is all about power. David said, Once have I heard 
Not once that God spoken and twice have I heard that all power belongs to God. Hallelujah. This is the God whom you and I, we are serving. Many have served him and they became successful. Many have served him and they succeeded. But if we will put our trust in this God, if you will put your trust in this God, you wouldn't need to throw in the towel. You wouldn't need to quit the race. It is true the business plan had failed. It is true that you are, you are so indebted in, in a whole lot of stuff. It is true that things are not going on the way you had planned. But listen, you planned it, but God has a different plan for your life. You made a way, but God has a different plan for your life. Bible says the Lord orders the steps of the righteous. Hallelujah. Those who trust in the Lord will be like Mount Zion. I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, brethren. Because of the troubles that we go through, don't let us bend our integrity. Neither do we have to change our moral principles to fit in with the challenges that we go through. So many stories have I heard on, on the social network where because of hardship, people have to sell their bodies to earn some amount of money so that they can live life. Job said, Job chapter 27 verse 3 downwards, he says, as long as my breath is in me, as long as my breath is in me and the breath of God in my nostrils, my lips, verse 4, my lips will not speak wickedness, nor my tongue alter deceit. Far be it from me that I should say you are right. Till I die, I will not put away my integrity from me. Till I die, I will not put away my integrity from me. My righteousness I hold fast and will not let it go. My heart shall not reproach me as long as I live. We don't have to bend our, our, plan, our way of life, our moral standard only to meet the standard of which, uh, under which we live when it is not right. But if we will trust in the Lord, if we will believe in the Lord, knowing that he has a better plan for us, God will do it. God will do it. Bible talk, gives us a story in Daniel chapter 3 about three gentlemen that most of you might have heard about the story before. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. The scripture says that these Hebrew guys went into captivity in Babylon. And at that time, King Nebuchadnezzar built or made a, 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 an idol and ordered that everyone will have to bow to this idol at the sound of a trumpet. And these guys, because they knew God, they had walked with God and they have trusted God and they believe in God. The Bible says that when the trumpet sounded, these gentlemen made a decision that we will not bow. We will not break our, our, our relationship with God, no matter what it may be. And so Bible says that Shadrach and Abednego did not do it. I don't know who saw them stand up, but someone went to the king and spoke to the king and said to the king that, listen, when we were all bowing down, I, I, somehow I saw these three boys and they were still standing. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were brought before the king. And the king questioned him that them. That why didn't you bow to my image? And they said to the king, listen, king, we are not ready to bow to any other god. 
There is one God whom we know and his name is the God of, uh, uh, of creation. His name is Jehovah. His name is the Lord God of hosts. We are not going to bow to any other being except this God that we know. It is he that has kept us. It is he that has made us who we are. When things were not going on well, this God was with us. And so Cain, we are not ready. We will hold on to our integrity and our moral, moral standard and our righteousness with this God. And as these guys spoke to the king, the king said to them that, listen, you may not know what you're talking about. I have been king for years and I know what I'm saying. If you will play with me, I'm going to increase the furnace seven times. And when the trumpet sounds, you will be put in there. In Daniel chapter 3 verse 17, these gentlemen said to the king, if that is the case. Our God whom we serve. If that is the this is These are people that have put their trust in God. These are people that know God and they, had, they, they have totally submitted to the authority of God. If that is the case, oh king. Our God whom we serve is able to deliver us. Our God whom we serve is able to deliver us. People or you that is hearing me out there. Listen, I don't know the troubles that you may be going through. But if you hold on to your faith. Knowing that the God who made you and has transformed you to this, um, this image that you are in now. Or has kept you to all through these years. This trouble that you are facing may not and it will not destroy you. If only... You believe in this God. They said our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. It is not even from your hands, King. But the furnace, we don't care how much you are going to increase it. But we trust the God that when we were leaving the, uh, the land that we were coming to the promised land, there was a word that was given to us. And the word is be strong and be of good courage. Be strong and be of good courage. For your Lord, your God will go with you. And he will never leave you nor forsake you. And this word sank into their heart. And as they sat with the king and they stood before the king, they said that our God, he is able to deliver us. And even if he, will, he doesn't come in to do so, O oh, king, we will not bow. We will not bow. And the king said, threw them in. The Bible says that as they threw them in, these men were going into the fire furnace. I always say this in church, that as we go through troubles in life, you may think that God may not be there. So while these people were being marched into the furnace, I believe the women at that time were crying for them. They had sympathy for these guys that were being thrown into the furnace. They were pleading with them that they would just, just bow. Listen, listen, just bow. Shadrach, Shadrach, just, just do this, this, this. It doesn't hurt, just this. And be saved. I will not submit to any other God except this God. And the Bible says that they threw them in. The people that threw them in got burnt and they were destroyed. But as they got in there, the Bible says that whilst they were in there, not knowing God had already taken the lead. He says that he, it is he that will lead you. He will clear the way for you to take possession of it. That was the promise that they gave to them when Moses was leaving. And so God had already taken the lead and had made the place even much cooler. One, something that surprises me is what made them rest. 
was that thing that killed the enemies that put them in. If you will trust in the Lord your God, what your enemy thinks that it will kill you by doing it will save you rather, but it will kill the enemy. Only put your trust in God. And this guy entered, three people entered. They were in there praising Jesus. They were in there praising God. They were in there that we have gone through this. And the Bible says, as they were there, the king rose from his seat. And he said, didn't I put in three people? But now I see four. The king became so astonished and he rose in, in haste, a king, and spoke saying to his, his counselors, did we not three cast three men bound, three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, true, O king. Look, he answered, I see four men loose. I see four men loose. God wanted to prove to the king that I am the God that has power. I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the son of God. This king that knew nothing, but he was able to see a fourth person that does not look so natural. A fourth person that does not look like the man that he placed in. And the king was able to say that he looks like the son of God. Listen, we may not see God as we go through life. We may not see Jesus walking with us. But I can tell you that as we move through the furnace of our life, as we move through the difficult situations of our life, this God is always with us. For he has promised that he will never leave us nor forsake us. And so as they move through it, Jesus was already there. Don't destroy your integrity. Just move through life. Trust God. For those that trust God, they shall be like the mountains of Zion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The same king that had wanted to kill them said, bring them out. And he made a decree in verse 30. The king that had wanted to destroy them now saw God and promoted them. Promotion is on your way. Promotion is on your way. A new business plan is coming. A new place has been set for your life. Only just hold on to your faith. Only hold on to your faith. For God is about to do something new in your life. The king said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego come out. And the verse 30 said, Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. They got to a place, that was a place where they were not from. But because they held on to their faith and the God whom they serve, they were able to move through it and God blessed them. Paul said, Who shall separate us from the love of God? Who? Who shall separate you and I from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword or coronavirus. Normally who is referred to a person. But in this case as he began to mention the, the things that can separate them. None can be seen as a person. So there is a spirit behind it. And I want to encourage you. He said, I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers shall be able to change us from the path of God. The Lord has a plan for you and I. And any time we go through all these things, sometimes it's a test that we must pass. Many a times it's a test that we must pass. But most of us fail that test. Hallelujah. 
says, no temptation has come overtaken you except such that is common unto man. No temptation has overtaken you except that which is common unto man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able to do. But with the temptation, there will be a way out. He will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Children of God, I want to encourage you that whatever you are going through, God has given you the power to be able to bear it. Don't break your integrity. Hold on and don't throw away the don't throw in the towel. For help is on the way. Let the world know that you serve a God that loves and cares. You are a miracle to someone. That if you are able to stand, it will change the heart of somebody. This Cain who did not know God because of how these men were able to stand began to understand that there is a fourth person who looks like the son of God. What an evangelistic mission that these men went through or went to. Every day we will face them. Like Jesus said, each day, each day has its own trouble. But as you walk through the day and you encounter it or we come across it, the question we need to ask ourselves is, or ask God, is where is the way out of this? How can I come through this that your name will be glorified? May the Lord bless you. May God make you strong. Be courageous and stand for Jesus. In these days, things may be very difficult, but stand for Jesus. Seek first his kingdom and the other things that you are looking for will be added. Even if you don't get the other things. Bible says, what would it profit a man if he loses Christ and gains everything? Or gains everything and loses Christ. So having the kingdom means everything. Be focused and hold on. May God bless you. You mean more to us at Praise Palace than you may ever know. We appreciate you, and we thank our friends and partners for making this ministry possible. Together, we are presenting the gospel to the world. Please contact us or visit praisepalace.org today to share your prayer request, find out more about our resources, check out our upcoming events, and stay connected as we share the love of Christ around the globe.